So, the Madra Capital, welcome to Persian Online live stream. What's the... crack, folks? Hey, how are you? Hey, guys, what's happening over there? On a daily basis, I happen to discover incredible new bands coming from Ireland and the UK. I mean, Fontes DC, Just Mustard, Gila Band, you. Well, we're honored, we're honored to be part of that crew, man. Nice. Yeah, there's nice something nice. in the water. Yeah. 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 Good Irish water. It's a great time in uh, in Ireland and the uh, UK for the new music for me. For sure. Very great time. The <laughs> first question, uh, your name, Marder Cap the Marder Capital, is very great. Uh, so dark. How did you come up with it? Um, <clears throat> I think the story goes to back back to the beginning. Um, it's a reflection of the suicide rates in Ireland. Um, we felt that uh, even though like the, Ireland might not be the murder capital of crime, um, it does at times feel like the murder capital mm -hmm. of uh, death through suicide in younger people. Um, and I think at that time, the murder capital was a reflection of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, when I turned 39, your debut album came out. Like what, like uh, with any great album, a sense of feeling of pain behind every song of your debut album. The same feeling I get uh, from the album by Lou Reed and John Cale, uh, written in memory of Randy Warhol. So um, when I have heard, is probably the record I've listened to the most in the last three years. Tell me something about this fucking masterpiece. <laughs> uh, um, well, uh, we went into recorded of uh, 2018. Was it no 2019? Uh, March and April we were in the studio for like six weeks um, we did it with Flood uh, you know Flood from like Smashing Pumpkins Nick Cave and it was brilliant working with him uh, and he kind of he, he was brilliant kind of in understanding you know this is our first record and all the things that come emotionally when you're trying to record that particularly over that length of time like uh, I'm not sure we'll do that length of time recording again like depending on certain things you know um but uh he was he was great in like um staying in control of those sessions and kind of uh being with us there emotionally for all the different like decisions you had to make and uh, everything that was happening around that time it was a tough old record to make but uh we got it done yeah <laughs> i think we learned a lot from that that experience um just, I guess, like, just the kind of first record energy that we had. There's kind of a, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but also it's kind of, it's, um, it's kind of like in, it, it, it's always kind of uh, overridden by the, the amount of like, um, I guess, like try, trying anything and just like believing it'll just work because that's, you're kind of going off instinct a lot. Um that's what I found anyway. Um and then uh yeah, we got to we got to that point in the record. Like like Pump was saying, it it, it it we were in there for a long time. I don't know if we needed to be there for, for so long. Yeah. Compared to our the, the recording the, the recording for our for the new album, we were kind of in and out under three weeks. Oh. Uh, and the uh, fact that your second album, Jesus Recovery, will be released in January and uh, preceded by three amazing songs, one better than the other. Really like your new songs. What are the biggest differences between uh, this new album and your debut album? Thanks very much, Luca, for saying that. Um, I guess we, we want to go for a bit more, like... Um, I guess we uh, we want to get a, get like more color into our music, um, explore new textures, um, whether it be 
you know, use of, uh, you know, synthesizing our own sounds or use of samples. Um, we found that there was a space that we could kind of get away from, I guess, like the dark kind of brooding was one word that kept being used in the, after the first album. So um, we kind of wanted to get not necessarily brighter, but definitely more colorful and more text textural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what are the things that when I first and the Ginger Recovery have in common? Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. We haven't yeah, asked that. We haven't asked that, yeah. Well, it's still the five of us. That's one. Uh, ambition. The oh. ambition was, you know, it was really important to both. Mm. Um, I think uh, as well, <clears throat> um, uh, it's something that we've kind of been a subject like this kind of came up was that like um, we noticed that maybe some people were like wanting to get another another when I have fears or at least <clears throat> sonically like an album that was like. <clears throat> uh, maybe still had like the post punk har harshness, um, but for us as a band, like we're always just <clears throat> like a, a lot of what we write is just a reflection of how we're feeling or the things we're thinking about, or maybe not always the things that we're feeling, but maybe sometimes the thing that we want to like, uh like manifest into the world and sometimes there's like with this record anyway it was like things that we couldn't feel that we wanted to feel um like so an example of that was like on don't cling to life um a part of a part of that being written was um i want i wanted to hear a song it was like about a sad subject or about grief, but that you could actually dance to it and you could like feel this sense of elation even though you were in this dark place. Um, and I know for like a thousand lives, um, James was like sort of manifesting this love um, um, that might not have existed yet. I think it maybe, maybe it was like similar subject matter to Only Good Things as well. Um, so there is there is a correlation of our, ourselves doing that at times that like maybe something doesn't exist in our world right now um and especially when we're writing like our world very much does become what we're making um and you sort of do that through the art you're like i want to feel this right now or, or i want to hear a song that sounds like this so instead of like always trying to find it you're in a place of privilege in a band that you can actually just fucking make it or challenge yourself to make it um and i think yeah like the correlation between the two records is that like you know we're constantly um putting out what we're feeling inside or what we want to feel inside or what we're feeling inside or what we want to feel or hear outside um and in the first record that happened end up being like sounding like it did. And now that same um, exploration and ambition and uh, need to like push things out or hear things around yourself ends up sounding like easy recovery this time when we're like um, just so excited for life and the adventure of like, what we get to do. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, well um, and, um, any anticipation of the tracks uh, that we will find in uh, Gigi Recovery? Um, well, go, going off what Gabe, Gabe's answer there, um, in terms of like feeling, searching, I guess, searching while at the same time trying to feel something out. I guess like the the title track, Gigi's Recovery, was one of those examples where we were working on it for quite a, quite some time and we get get into a part of the song that we knew wanted to feel a certain way. Um 
which you know I guess we we achieved in in, in some respects um but um I guess like a lot of the album as well will will reveal itself once we get playing live as well uh because we haven't because of the situation that we were in when we were writing it we weren't really able to try out the songs live um so like yeah I'm, i guess like i'm i'm anticipating just a, a, a kind of a new almost like the the final uh you know getting to a point of the songs once they're played live um that they'll kind of like reveal themselves in a, in a fully fledged form then yeah 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 and the another question i often ask what are you what are your top three favorite records of all time nice all right all right here we go Well, each each one of us answer the three, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Huh. Um of all time. All time. Um, well, it switches every month or so, you know. You know yeah. yourself. It changes quite a bit. But um I recently just I mean the last like two years I kept going back to Automatic for the People by OREM. And that, that album just keeps kind of developing for me. I I, I love that album so much. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's all it's just full of bangers as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else want to? Well, I think of my second. Anyone um, else want to? I think I've got my list. I think I've got my list. That's a good list. Um, I always go back to Elliot Smith. Um, either you know the self-titled album, yeah. or either or. So, yeah, either or, Elliot Smith, or either or, either or. Is one of my favorite records. Just, Which one? You are. Oh yeah. Yeah, and the whole uh, discography of uh, Elliot Smith because uh, I really love it. I really love Elliot. Yeah, he, he he's a beautiful. Uh, just a. I don't. I just don't think there's anyone that has done it quite like him in a way. Uh, people have kind of tried to. You know, replicate it because he 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 had a had a certain like a whisper that was very authentic to him to his singing, um, but still sounded it had that element of like the grunginess maybe of like I don't know like people like Jeff Be or Je sorry Jeff Buckley, um, so yeah, there's something about him that just brings you to a place. It brings me anyway to a place that's uh, it's sad but it's quite comforting. Yeah. Yeah, sure. mm. And uh, in July, you open up for Pearl Jam in Hyde Park. Have you met the guys from the band? Because I know the bassist, their bassist, their famous, is a huge yeah. fan of the Marla Capital. No, we, we didn't get yeah. to meet them. Like, um, uh, it was still kind of COVID strict at the time. Yeah. All the fans were, were separated. Um. I yeah. mean, I'd love to meet them. Uh, Ten was such a formative album for me. Like, so, I mean, I love to express that to all of them. There. Um, yeah, yeah, they're in a they're in a massive like they're they're on such a big tour during the summer that they they kind of had to stay in a COVID bubble. So, um, I don't know. It was kind of like uh, because we were planning, to, we were on that bill for Hyde Park since before the pandemic. So. Um, you know, this that gig was always on the horizon, and like uh, maybe meeting them, it would have been nice to meet them. But we did get, um, we got a lovely text, um, um, yeah, was it? So, so someone got a text anyway. Her, 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 her text text, from, yeah, yeah, just thanking us and like, yeah. uh, so they enjoyed the gig. Yeah, that was definitely a mad, a mad feeling. Just like one of the guys at the party jam giving us a text. That was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you'd mentioned it was um, um, yeah. Who who was that? Yeah, the, he he had mentioned us in um, yeah. Sorry, it was Jeff that mentioned us in a podcast there a couple of years ago, and it, that was really weird. Like it was, it was, it was, uh, it was exciting to kind of hear that somebody was listening to your uh. To your music 
and I'd felt like mentioning you and, you know, um, so yeah, it was nice. It came full circle when uh, he sent that text to, to Irv. Yeah, it's cool. And um, well, I can't wait to listen to Gigi Recovery, but since we're an Italian based side, when the fuck are you coming to play in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> as uh, soon as fucking possible, bro. I want to yeah. get there so bad. Oh, yeah, I love that country. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, okay, we've, we, we have all been a couple of times, but we've never been to play music. Yeah. Uh, wh- whereabouts are you in Italy? Sorry, wh- where whereabouts are you in Italy? Near Bologna, uh, near Bologna, near Bologna, uh, Bologna, ah, okay. Bologna, and Milan, between the these two cities. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. Must be beautiful. You'll have there. to take. You'll have to take us out for food sometime when we're close. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, it was a good place. Yeah, or, or maybe we will fly next time, me and my wife to Ireland to see you. Okay, oh, we'll yeah? take you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take you for pints and grave diggers in Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More than welcome. Yeah, and the uh, guy, that's all, and. Uh, you for existing in uh, existing in this fucked up world and can't wait to listen to your new album and I hope to see you soon in Italy or maybe in Ireland. All right. Yeah, Luca, thank you. Bro. Eric, Thanks very much, Luca. You're a gentleman. Thank you yeah. so much for those kind words. That means the world. Yeah, we can't wait to get to Italy at some point. Yeah. Many thanks again. All right. All the best, Luca. Good luck. Grazie. Bye-bye. 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 Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.